Hi everyone and welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, the Thursday evening edition. We're heading for the weekend. We're finally heading towards the end of January. It's been a long and cold month, that is for sure. You know, it's always interesting to see what is lurking on my phone when I wake up in the morning, whether it be a Facebook comment or a tweet or this time it was an email. I got an email from a lady in the middle of the night last night saying she was very disappointed with my 11 o'clock uh, weathercast last night because I had the year wrong on the blizzard of 1978. There was no blizzard in 1978. She insisted it was in 1977 and that it lasted for weeks, that blizzard. Um, so I had to, you know, wake up, get a little caffeine in me and compose a a firm but polite response uh, saying, no, there was indeed a blizzard in 1978. In fact, it's the most famous snowstorm on record in our region. Uh, a lot of people uh, still around experienced that blizzard in 1978 and would beg to differ that it was a year earlier in 1977 like that uh, nice lady uh, insisted. But anyway, uh, I haven't gotten a reply from her, so uh, remains to be seen whether she uh, she got the message or not. Anyway, uh, this is a look at the uh, calendar view of January so far. What a month it has been. Now, ran out of room at the bottom, so I don't have the last two days of the month on here, uh, the 30th and 31st. But through today's date, uh, we've had many more cooler than average high temperatures. And when you combine the highs and the lows, we are running now 3.1 degrees cooler than average. And this will end up being the coldest January we've had in seven years. It's been since January of 2015, back in that pretty tough winter of 2014-2015. Uh, since we've had a, uh, a January this cold. So, yeah, it's been pretty tough sledding. You know, we bob uh, bobbed above freezing briefly during the middle of last week, but for the most part, we've had about two straight weeks now of pretty harsh conditions, including last night and this morning. You know, it's interesting, at the Youngstown Warren Airport and some of the surrounding areas, such as Cortland and uh, parts of uh, northern Mercer County as well, the, the mercury did not get as low as in other spots. I, there was a little bit of a breeze, uh, so the wind didn't go completely calm. There might have been actually even a little bit of an influence of some, you know, Lake Erie uh, influenced water drifting down, uh, somewhat modified air coming off the lake. Uh, just a theory. Otherwise, I can't. I'm not real sure why the temperature was kind of refusing to go below zero at the airport. It was crystal clear, lots of snow on the ground. Um, but just enough of a breeze, I think, to keep it up. But yeah, New Philly had a record low of 11 below zero. Pittsburgh was at minus six this morning. And here's just a quick sampling of 6 a.m. temperatures this morning on some of our unofficial local thermometers, personal weather stations. Wide variety. I I've seen some, some uh, car thermometer pictures of 19 and even 20 below zero in the area first thing this morning. I live in Columbiana County, kind of between Lisbon and East Liverpool, and I had minus 16.6, I think, first thing this morning. Crazy, crazy cold. I was driving home last night, and already at you know 11.30 p.m., it was already 12 below on my car thermometer in some of the, the, the valley locations. There's a lot of hills and valleys, of course, as you go south into Columbiana County, and uh, when I was in those kind of sheltered valleys, it was already freezing even before midnight. All right, with well, as cold as it got today, no surprise that uh, we did have some cool op optical phenomena at sunrise this morning. Crystal clear sunrise, and this is what we call a 22 degree halo with what we call sun dogs on either side. That's kind of where the, uh, the sunlight is over here on either side of that halo. Uh, some people will call this, you know, kind of a rainbow in the sky. Uh, sometimes when this is real high in the sky, and it's kind of a streak of light. That's a, like a circumhorizontal arc. Uh, when you have a ring around the sun or sometimes a ring around the moon, those are 22 degree halos. The 22 degrees, not a reference to the temperature, but a reference to the angle in which the light is refracted and reflected off those itsy bitsy tiny ice crystals suspended in the air. Those, that same setup can sometimes produce light pillars or ice pillars. We saw examples of that over the last weekend, Saturday morning when it was very, very cold. Uh, we had streaks of light where these little tiny ice crystals were reflecting and refracting street lights and other artificial light sources and making these pillars of light. And those can happen sometimes when it gets this cold. The other thing we see sometimes when it gets this cold are what we call frost quakes. Uh, if you've heard some rumblings, uh, what sounds like a minor earthquake or minor shaking, more than likely it's a frost quake uh, when it gets this cold. Any moisture that 
uh, manages to stay unfrozen and then seep down into the ground and then it gets really cold that uh, causes the ground to expand and sometimes that makes a noise and that's a frost quake but compared to the same time last night hey it's you know improvement it's not exactly warm out but it's 13 degrees warmer than the same time last evening across our area but we have had a little bit of snow to contend with over the last few hours uh, we've had uh, trace amounts coatings even maybe a half an inch or so in some spots and some localized slick areas now this band of steady snow is pushing away for the rest of the evening pretty quiet weather now i can't rule out a touch of freezing drizzle before tonight is through low end chance but something that can't be ruled out and i do think flurries will return towards the end of the night tonight another cold front is heading our way it's another arctic front that front is up here right now this tracks our way tonight into tomorrow morning and temperatures will respond for tomorrow it's going to be one of those days where temperatures hardly move they're bracing for a big one along the east coast winter storm watches are out for down east maine coastal new england down towards new york city winter storm warnings already up for parts of the delmarva heading up to the jersey shore some parts of massachusetts rhode island maybe connecticut might get a blizzard warning before this uh, weekend is through with a big time storm that will brush the eastern seaboard in the meantime we'll have clouds tomorrow some flurries in the morning clouds will uh, hang tough throughout the day that big east coast storm now it's not going to be right along the coast but it's going to be pardon me close enough to the coast that we get heavy snow bands again right along the coast and up into coastal new england so the sweet spots probably somewhere in massachusetts up into uh coastal maine for us sunshine saturday afternoon followed by clouds increasing on sunday in this next clipper this is nothing like the clipper that we had last Sunday. This is not as potent of a disturbance, but it is going to bring us some light snow and some flurries on Sunday, especially in the afternoon, and maybe we get an inch or less worth of snow out of that. Here's our model spread right now. The European is way down here, suggesting it's not much more than a trace. Uh, it's kind of an outlier right now. Most of our modeling is up here, around a half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Maybe someone tries to get an inch, and maybe we have some slick spots to contend with on Sunday, but this should not be a repeat of the four and five inches that a lot of us had last sunday about four days ago all right so again the sweet spot with our east coast storm and perhaps blizzard conditions uh coastal parts of rhode island massachusetts maine new york city and points east get a big snowstorm this is mostly east of philadelphia and dc and of course way too far to the east to be much of a problem for us all right the fall is coming next week i do think that there will be another shot of pretty good cold air for the first weekend of february but we'll get up to 10 or 11 degrees warmer than average during midweek and that'll translate into highs in the 40s for midweek until then yeah we're still in the deep freeze saturday's high in the teens will be about 18 degrees cooler than the average real quickly this evening wanted to talk about the latest run of the european weeklies this is that bi-weekly set of model data on mondays and thursdays uh, from the european center that projects out 46 days uh, if you've been following my long-range thoughts of late i've been talking about how february will not be as cold as january i still suspect that's the case but there's been some long-range model trends this week suggesting that february will not be as mild as we thought a week or two ago um tonight's run of the european weeklies this is a look at the temperature anomalies over the next 30 days averaged uh showing a lot of blue in the east now some of this will be influenced by the cold next few days but as we project deeper out into february some of these model trends are uh you know are not our friend if you're longing for a uh, a reprieve from the cold and a big time thaw in february i still think that february will hold more mild days than january especially the second half of february but some of these model trends suggest that the the flip to a much different pattern may be delayed for a little while and the thought that february might be kind of more in the flavor of december maybe that idea is not going to pan out it may be somewhere in between december and january not as cold as january but certainly not as warm as december we'll do a final february outlook on weather for weather geeks early next week in the meantime thanks for watching tonight and enjoy the rest of your Thursday.